Hello, I'm Femi OK. Welcome to the Streams Online pre-show. This is the part of the program where we give you a sneak peek at what's to come in the main program. Today, we're discussing Israel's decision to shelf the controversial Pora plan that would have relocated tens of thousands of Bedouins from their homes in the Negev. Victory for the opponents or simply a delay? With us to talk about this, Amar Al Sana Al Hajuj with the Arab Jewish Center for Equality. Dov Lipman, he's a member of the Israeli parliament. Aviv Retigur is a journalist with the Times of Israel. And Amir Abu Qaeda is a Bedouin activist who was leading many of the demonstrations against the plan. So Amal, Amir, Dov and Aviv, welcome to the Streams pre-show. It's great to have you here. Welcome, Thanks, good to be here. and good evening. Wow, in good voice. I can hear there's, an, uh, there's a good potential debate there, just in those four vibrant <laughs> voices. Let me introduce you to another voice, and that is the voice of Malika Bilal. Malika, your role today. Thank you, Femi. Well, my role is to wrangle in the online community's voice into the conversation. You're already tweeting us. Even with the little change in news earlier this morning, we're still getting lots of tweets and video comments. I plan to bring them all into the show, and so for those of you watching and wanting to add your voice in, use hashtag AJStream. So guess I introduce you just a tiny bit to the audience, but I want you to give them a little insight into how you're going to debate and where you come from in this conversation. So I will ask you to complete this sentence for me and it gives us an idea of where your passion actually happens to be. So let's start with Haviv. This debate that we're about to have is about what, Haviv, in a nutshell? It's about Israel's most neglected minority about uh, how that minority integrates into a modern state and about how the Bedouin themselves talk about it and try and frame um, a lot of these struggles um, that they have to go through, the challenges that they have to overcome in doing that. All right, so Amir, finish the sentence for me. This debate is about what, Amir? This debate is about justice and having justice for our Arab Palestinian community in the Nakab and giving and giving them uh, solutions to uh, to the problems we're we're facing, like uh, imminent ha house demolitions happening in the Nakab all the time. Okay, you're hearing audience, you're hearing where our guests are coming from. We're going to go back to all of these very key areas, but let me go to MK. I like to say MK, MK Dov Lipman, because I don't get to say it very often. He is a member of parliament for the Israeli parliament. Dov, finish that sentence for me. This debate is about what today? It's about the only democracy in the Middle East, Israel, dealing with the great complexities of different minorities living in a Jewish state, and a Jewish state that believes that all people are created in God's image, a state that stands for human rights, and trying to balance all the different equations in a very complex situation. Wow. They are very good at summarizing, and we're going like, to extend that conversation in the main show. Before we extend it, let's hear Amal's summary of what the debate is about. For you, Amal, what should we be talking about in the main show? What is yes. this debate about for you? We, we are talking about the struggle of a national minority that living in what's so-called the only democracy in the Middle East with conditions of lack of basic services such as water, electricity, and basic services. This is debate about our struggle to be equal citizens and also to maintain our Palestinian identity and also our culture as Bedouins. All right, wow. All of the guests have set out very clearly their perspective. You are going to hear them debate all of that coming up in about 30 seconds time. Let me very quickly just check in with Amir. Amir, what were you doing about two or three hours ago when you heard the news? I was uh, I was just trying to uh, to understand and, and get the calls. People are calling me and saying, you know, the the proper plan is uh, scrapped. And All right, did we did we drag you out of a party? Uh, kind of, yeah. Kind okay. of. People okay. here around me are just. All right, we're hearing more from Amir and from all of our guests coming up in the main show, and that starts in thirty seconds time. See you there.
Hi, I'm Femi OK and you're in the stream. Today, Israel has halted plans to relocate thousands of Bedouins from the Negev. So is this a victory for opponents or merely a delay? Full disclosure, when we came to work this morning, the peg for this story, it had moved. We had breaking news. Things had changed slightly. The prior plan was halted. Malika Bilal is out there wrangling the community. <laughs> How is that reflected in the way our online community were reacting to this show? Well, full disclosure, I love when that happens. Okay. But of course, as soon as the news broke, we saw tweets from activists who have been protesting the resettlement of the Bedouin in the Negev. Mm -hmm. and protests that look like this on my screen here. We saw them celebrate. They tweeted things like, the Prower plan as it's called, has failed thanks to the people. But we also saw caution. Abir Kupti tweets in, while celebrating, remember, the struggle continues. Of course, we want to hear from all of you at home your thoughts on this. So join the conversation with hashtag AJStream. And remember that you can be part of this conversation in a number of very different ways. So if you want to use more than 140 characters, really easy, go to facebook.com forward slash AJ stream. That is where I am right now. You can comment on stories. You can suggest stories. You can also hover over here and like stories as well. And here's a look at some Instagram photos from around the world that we're also checking out. Growing international pushback, demonstrations and a lack of transparency have led Israel to shelve its controversial Prora plan, with revelations that the former Israeli minister behind the plan never received approval from Bedouin communities, division grew within the Knesset, and on Thursday it was finally announced that it would be halted. The bill would have relocated up to 40,000 Bedouins from the Negev to different towns and villages. Critics described it as ethnic cleansing but proponents claimed it would have provided Bedouins with better opportunities and living conditions. So is this a victory for the Bedouin community or merely a postponement of the Prora plan? Joining us to discuss this is Bedouin activist Amal Alsana al Hajuj. She is with the Arab Jewish Center for Equality. On Skype from Jerusalem is Dov Lipman, a member of Israeli parliament. In our Google Plus Hangout, Haviv Rati Gur is a journalist with the Times of Israel. He joins us from Jerusalem. And in the Gev is Amir Abakweda, a Bedouin activist who was a lead organizer in the protests against the plan. I'm going to start here with some headlines. We have Haaretz, Israeli government halts controversial plan to resettle 30,000 Bedouin. Let me just click over to the Times of Israel, government shells poor plan on Bedouin settlement. So, Amal, when you look at those headlines, when you heard the news, as a Bedouin activist, is this a victory for you? Yes, uh, actually, let me start with this. It's a victory. It's a big achievement that finally the government understand very clearly that when it's not the right thing to do, people will go out in the street and will voice out. But still, while we are separating, we have to remember that house demolition is taking place still in the unrecognized villages and people still have no water, no electricity. And during this very tough days of snow and winter in the Naqab area, people are still lacking of basic human rights. So the next step should be how we continue from here. So, Dove. Amal is celebrating, activists are celebrating who are supporting the Bedouin community. What's happened in the Israeli parliament? Is this a back down? Well, first of all, I would say that it's very important to understand that this plan was prepared exactly for what Amal is talking about, that there's an entire population in the Negev, in the southern part of Israel, that don't have the basic infrastructure that they need, and we want to provide for them. And the attempt wasn't to simply relocate people and in some way infringe on their rights. It was to make order in an area where for decades, unfortunately, there's been no order and there's been no semblance of law, 
not in any way, by the way, criticizing anyone. It's just what happened. I think both sides were in a lose-lose situation, and we were trying to create order and create a situation where they are actually connected to the infrastructure. On the government side, yeah, I do think it's a... Yeah, Dov, I do think, Dov but yes, yeah, I'm sorry, but yeah, it's the, the same object in the, in the end of the road is clear. But when this plan is mainly security driven and viewing me as a security threat to the state of Israel while I am a citizen, and if you read the plan, it's all about how to get rid of me and have minimum, maximum Bedouins in minimum land. I don't have Amal, electricity, Amal, water, yes, yes and no, all these services yes no in Does minimum land. Include does the plan include 1.2 billion shekel to help women enter the workforce to build industrial zones and training for work? Yes or no question? That's great, but don't use the carrot so and the stick with me, though. Therefore, if that's, okay? if that's true, don't use please the stick don't say and the plan is because there is of no, a no, 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 Dove. Dove, best, there is best, no way best. that you want to zone the Bedouin in certain areas. What would you feel if they would say no Jewish people can live in Manhattan? This I is know, discrimination. Not, and this is I what was in, in the Tower of Love and Dove. I'm just God. going to ask Excuse you to me, stand all, down for a moment. I, I, Amir, please jump in. I'll answer the question. With all due respect, in 2005, we relocated Jews from the Gaza Strip, and we understood that was for the betterment of the whole area. It's not a Jew or Arab issue. There are times when, yes, a country has to move one population or another, give them the benefits, pay for them uh, for the relocation, but it's not an issue of somehow violating one person's rights or another. We did it for Jews. We might have to do it for Arabs. We might have to do it for Jews in the Yo, future. That's the way Dov, it works again, sometimes. you are Your comparing... Analogy. No, yeah. no, that's Your not acceptable, though. You are comparing yeah. me with the settlers where I live in my historic land. I was there before you, Dov, Ahmed Aliyan came to Israel. I was there. My grandfather was there. My grandmother was there. I have the right on my land. And I have the right to have all the services in my land as an Israeli citizen. All right. So, so uh, what you're all, hearing, Dov Lipman, MK Lipman, can agree you bear with me one moment? Do you agree moment? that I, I have a 3,000 year right to my land? All right. You know that this is a very long conversation that goes far beyond what's happening with the Bedouins right now in the Negev, which is how Israelis call that region, and also the Nakab, which is how Arabs call that region. I'm just going to break you apart for a moment. I like your passion. It's very... It, it gives us a sense of how important this conversation is, but also we want to understand it as an international community and our online community wants to take part too. They definitely do. They're just as heated as our guests here on the show. I want to pick up on something that Amal said. Uh, to quote you, you said, I don't have electricity and water. I mean, I, I want you to look at this tweet um, from people who, who that message is resonating with. Jillian says, as the power plan was canceled, it's important to remember that Israel continues to demolish homes, she says, and deny services to the Bedouin of unrecognized villages. There's also this video comment on what some of those services uh, that are missing look like. Have a listen to this. One of the most important things we should be aware of is that the power plan is not a unique event. It's just another step in the ethnic cleansing process of Palestine. Tens of thousands of Bedouins have already been displaced from the Negev in the past decade. Israel says now that the relocation will provide these Bedouins with better living conditions. But it doesn't say that it is Israel who deprives them from basic services like education, water, electricity or, or health care. Or that after relocating them, their lands will be under Israeli control. So, I mean, she says Israel has deprived them of basic services like education, water, electricity. Can you let us know, you're in the Naqab or the, the, the Negev, can you let us know what living conditions are like? You know the reason I'm staying here uh, late in the late in the evening in Beersheba, not going back to my village, because uh, as you might know, that today was a v very rainy day. We in my village rely on solar panels to get uh, electricity, and today we won't have electricity because the city doesn't doesn't provide those basic services like. Uh, electricity or infrastructure we don't have any paved roads in our community and if you're if you're saying you want to promote the community and bring order I mean this kind of really ridiculous ridiculous way of putting things why can't you provide services to the com to, to the villages already now why should you have why should you have to displace the communities in order to bring to 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 provide them with services right so Amir, that is a great can question I can i ask you something let that is a very specific great question dove what's the answer um, to that 
First of all, I very much appreciate the question, and I hope that I can get through the answer without being interrupted. Uh, there are some, somewhere over 30 villages which were not established in any kind of an official or legal type of way and have just kind of spread out around the Negev. We do live in a country where I can't just go out on the next hilltop and start building somewhere. It has to be done legally. There's permits, there's battles, there's courts. And then once a city is established, of course, the state connects all of that infrastructure. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to take over those over 30 uh, areas that are not done legally, uh, somewhere between 20 and 25 will remain. Others will move to ones that already exist. And the goal is that, yes, Amir and Ahmad, there should be water and electricity loudly. and education. That is the goal. We are not a people who seek to deprive anyone of anything. And I can tell you as a member of Knesset, I've never heard one discussion of how can we deprive the population? It's always how can we make it better? Yes, the Israeli Arabs need more infrastructure All we're right. here to make that happen and we want to work together with us let's be partners in this process and not view it as one against the other all right i mean you know, in, in, yeah, in order but, to but, make uh, in or, okay in order to make things better you have to demolish houses i mean this is i mean this is uh, excuse me with all due respect uh, that you uh, asked the question you know, if a jew builds is, a house illegally uh, it's also demolished let's not make okay. this jew versus arab it's a state okay. things are done illegally there are consequences that applies to everybody I mean, okay. Dov, Dov, those, we, those we approached villages, the government. Th those villages Dov, we approached the government 30 years ago. The, those villages. Uh, Amal, we hear you. Just hold on for a moment. I mean, go ahead. Before the inception of Israel, and part of them were, were, were basically built after Israeli forcibly displaced, uh, uh, you know, parts of our community to, to, to their, um, to their um, meanwhile location. But, uh, I mean, your analogy is totally misplaced. If you're if you're a Knesset member, you should know. And we have seen two days or few, uh, one week ago there were secret documents, uh, uh, a secret agreement between the the prime minister and uh, uh, the the minister of of uh, settlement, who who just you know why why don't lack? There was that. Just one village or uh, two to three villages might be might be recognized, and we are talking about three five villages. And you're telling me you want to provide them with all the services. Why can't you provide them with, with services right now? Those villages existed before you came to Israel. Okay, because before, you can't because you can't yeah. have a situation and then, and where talking, we have over listen, thirty listen, illegal villages. All right, so we're going to push over. this conversation on just a little possible. bit. I, I have to say something about just bear, just bear, 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 I have to say provide them. We'll create the order and that'll happen. Tell me, tell All right, so Amir and Dov, you're going to have go to backwards and forwards. We don't have the Amir, whole show for this. Sabotage. So bear with a us a moment. Take a breath. I I, your I final mean, sentence. Final go sentence. ahead. Okay. I'll give you one sentence and that's it. Dov, just tell me to which office I go to get a permit to my house, okay? All right. We're leaving that sentence hanging because the community needs to get in. I also hear Amal as well. Haviv, you are in the corner somewhere. We will drag you out of the corner and bring you into the conversation. Bring in just a second. Yes. Um, if I may, uh, there's a, a conversation going on there and there's also one going on online and it's mm. similar. And so, uh, Habib, I want you actually to listen to these competing narratives. Kuzi on Twitter says the resettlement will actually be an advantage to the Bedouins since they will be moved to better places which are non vulnerable. On the other hand, though, you have people who are not so sure. On Facebook, Anya says relocate them for better living conditions? Question mark. Why not just enhance? what areas they're in and of course that's a, a, a question that Amir just asked a little uh, a little while ago so Habib what is the answer to that the, the answer to that the, the very fact that these questions are being asked tells us that we haven't had the kind of basic uh, fact-checking um, that that we need to understand what's going on the fact is there are 90,000 Bedouin living in unplanned communities. These communities expand in ways that aren't planned. They move in all these different directions. Uh, can people suddenly f establish tents way out on, you know, on hilltops or dunes, and you cannot provide services to that kind of establishment. The proverb plan, which I do not endorse, I don't know if it's a great plan. If anything, I think it's not nearly as generous as it should be. But what the proverb plan did was take 60,000 of these Bedouin and say where you live today is going to be turned into established villages with infrastructures, take 30,000 or one third of that population and say we're going to take you and move you into these areas that we are establishing as set planned locations right. and villages. Now, I think that the failure of this plan is a disaster for the Bedouin. 
And the fact that the Bedouin activists that we're listening to right now don't understand that is a sign of a political... Oh, sorry, I, I really understand it very well. Sorry for that. It, All right, you so know Amal, a how come you Amal? say you don't understand it? <laughs> I, I have to say something. something. When we approach the government, and, 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 we okay, approach... Okay, Amir, I'm just going to have to take a breath because we heard a lot of you. We approach... and Dove, I'm just going to ask three guests not to speak for a moment so that we can hear Amal. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, uh, we approached the government 30 years ago. We also searching for a solution. We don't want our people to stay in these conditions. We are searching for a solution. We approached the government 30 years ago. All the unrecognized villages that we are talking about are according to the planner criteria. None of them is two houses on this uh, 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 place or in this mountain. All these villages are uh, answering the criteria of a planning. So why don't the government recognize they these villages while, planning. while, uh, give me a minute, while with there are farmers where two people are living there only because they are Jewish, they will provide them with electricity no, no, and no. water and they would say, let's help this young generation flourish the Negev. Well, we are there, we can flourish the Negev because this is our area and we can make the Negev better for everyone. Why can't the government Listen so to yes. our voices. Why I, I can't the voices, government listen to our loudly, voices Amal. when we um, approach them with our alternative plan? All right, so Amal, you talk about an alternative plan. And Haviv and Dove and Amir, I'm just going to ask you all just to take a collective breath. I want to help our audience just get on board with this. If they're not in the region, they may be a little confused. But I want them to jump here. This is the Times of Israel. This is Benny Begin. He's a former Israeli minister. It was his plan, his plan about the idea of relocation, thousands of Bedouins to take them to more formal areas to live. And this is what Benny Began said. He says, the prime minister accepted my advice to delay bringing the bill on the arrangement of Bedouin settlement in the Negev to a Knesset vote. So the question is here, we hear the debate, we hear the an animosity, we hear the passion, but what next? And I'm just gonna ask you one by one, because we really want to hear the way forward. Amal, you were talking about a plan. Briefly, what's the suggestion yes. that you can make? Briefly. Yes, what we suggest w with the fact that the, the legislation fair right now, we still have the problem. So we have to go forward to solve the problem of the unrecognized villages and the ownership on our lands. So the alternative plan that was made by BIMCOM and other organizations is suggesting that these unrecognized villages would be recognized on the situation in the place where they are right now and they can show us right. that it's that they can do it and that something in these villages would be able to be uh, pursued in that matter this is okay. one the second thing we have to work on the uh, issue of uh, budget allocation we have to see that the bedouin community get equal budget as a jewish community in israel in all fields economic and political and social uh, fields the third thing is that we are claiming ownership over less than five percent of the land of the negev we are making 30 percent of the population of the negev right. why cannot the government just recognize the ownership of five percent of the land for 30 percent of the people okay i hear that very clearly and thank you to the other guests for allowing amal to make that point show the same respect to dove dove you're a member of parliament this prior plan as it is right now is shelved is it coming back What's the better solution? So first of all, I just want to frame my answer. I, when, when we hear this discussion turned into Israel infringing on the Arab rights, not giving human rights, we're talking about a country that sets up a field hospital in the Golan Heights for Syrian casualties of the Syrian civil war. That when there's a tsunami in the Philippines, runs there to set up a field hospital to help. When there's an earthquake in Kenya, runs there to help. Right, Dov, I, 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 I don't know what to, me, to do with this. Now, excuse me, I'm talking about the Palestinian Bedouin community in the Negev. Like we or human rights is unfair. I think there are very legitimate claims. There are, we have to sit and draw out the plan and make sure it works. We can't just say every single village is recognized because then we are obligated to provide them with an infrastructure. We didn't say which we this, cannot, though. All right, I, I'm I didn't saying this. You. Let's I, mute I didn't interrupt you. I hope you I won't really interrupt me. Uh, we cannot provide it for all of them. We're trying to do it as many as possible. And I do think it's worth restudying and sitting down and having a conversation with the Bedouin leadership to find the right way, but without 
without any kind of silliness about somehow we're against the Arab population or the Bedouin population. It's just incorrect. It changes the conversation to a direction it shouldn't go. Let's sit together and we'll do it in the right way. Milika? Well, in answering the question of what happens next, and does this mean that this plan is completely off the table? Mm -hmm. Our community had lots of thoughts. Abir says it will die for the time being, and the Israeli government will look for more sophisticated ways, she says, to colonize the Naqab. Uh, Lehzen says, I don't believe it's canceled. The method might change. The objective will remain the same. Uh, but have a listen to this comment. This is a video comment along those same lines. Well, the news that the Israeli government has decided to drop the Prava plan in its current form isn't too much of a surprise given the opposition that it had faced from both the political right in the Knesset as well as from activists on the ground uh, and internationally and it's they who should be congratulated today. Uh, but it also needs to be remembered that Israel's racist uh, and discriminatory policies in the Negev have been going on for decades uh, and the battle for equality, the struggle for recognition of all the villages uh, will surely have to continue. So Amir, in that video comment, Ben White mentions the activists on the ground, and you are one of those activists. So you mentioned earlier today to Femi that you were celebrating earlier this morning, but what happens next? We, uh, we're just celebrating for today, because we know that tomorrow, that tomorrow we have to still uh, continue with our struggle, because there are still houses being demolished in the Naqab. There are still people ha without, any, without any basic services living in, in those villages. So we have to go on with our struggle. Uh, obviously, um, it's really unfortunate that the, those two gentlemen are sitting in Tel Aviv and tell me how to, how should I live my life without without even consulting us. I mean, this this proper plan was 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 done without the consultation of the community. So we ha can, I mean, all this orientalistic discourse of. You know those Bedouins, they don't know what to do, they don't know what they want from themselves. We obviously have our master plan, we have our alternatives, we submitted it to the government and, and we, we didn't get any response on that. So we obviously going to continue our, our struggle for recognition in our villages. We have like 35 villages without any without basic services and, and you have to understand those villages are not just like, you know, yeah. So Amir, you've made this point very clearly and we understand the, the conditions in the villages. So the question was, what next? In a sentence, what next as an activist? We are demanding recognition of our villages and we de demand recognition of our ownership on right. the land. We're just five, per we, we are just demanding five yep, percent. Exactly, so exactly what Amal was saying. So we hear you very clearly. Haviv, uh, from the, the Times of Israel as a journalist, uh, this is a story that is a continuing story. It's been going on since the 1940s. Um, the Bedouins have been in this region for many, many hundreds of years. What's the solution? Well, I'm actually extremely uh, happy. I just heard Amal say that nobody is saying that no no villages will have to be moved. Right. If the difference between the government plan and the activists is the number of villages that have to be moved, as soon as you reduce a debate to numbers, then you can negotiate. I think uh, we just heard a fantastic uh, breakthrough. Uh, that's one. Two, <laughs> you're, on you're hearing a slightly different conversation than I'm hearing, but I love that. Thank you. <laughs> well, if, maybe I'm out didn't say that, so clarify after. But I also think that there right. are two important points. Make one, one important point and then the other one we'll take to the post show because we're literally at the end of the program. So go ahead. One important point. Nobody is limiting Bedouin to these villages in all these, uh, right, we're hearing claims of ethnic cleansing. We're uh -huh. limiting Bedouin only villages to certain areas and 5% of the land ownership of the Negev, the vast majority of the Negev land that is owned by anything is owned by the military. Jews don't own the 95% of the land. So the whole notion that you would now only own 5% but you're 30% of the population. Right. The, the Jews live in apartment buildings. They live in even less of the land by per, by per capita okay. than the Bedouin. So these so are, these are relevant to statistics. Reti Gur. He's a journalist at the Thank Times of Israel. He has more to say, as too does Dov Lipman. He's a member of the Knesset. Amir Abu Kweda is a Bedouin activist and Amal Asana is a Bedouin activist. If you heard any of that conversation, you know that it's going to be an amazing post show at stream.aldazira.com. But what we do on the next AJ stream, well, on the next AJ stream, we're looking at the Ukrainian protests. Ukrainians have been on the streets for weeks now. Finally, their president says, well, maybe they will be signing an EU deal that's caused all of the chaos. But we will be finding out what the latest is on Monday with Ukrainians talking about their protest. Stay with us. The post show is next. The fiery post show, no doubt, at stream.aldazira.com. We see you online. Thanks for watching.
Hello again, this is the Streams Online Post Show. We are continuing our discussion on Israel's decision to shelve the controversial power plan that would have relocated tens of thousands of Bedouins from their homes in Negev. Still with us, we have Amal Al-Sana al, al with the Arab Jurist Center for Equality. Dove Lipman, member of Israeli parliament. Haviv Reti Gur is a journalist with the Times of Israel. Amir Abu Kweda is a Bedouin activist who is leading many of the demonstrations against the plan. <sighs> Amal. I hear yep. your passion. You are fuming right now. Can you put that sense of passion into words? Why are you so mad? For me, on paper, it looks like you've got a little victory going on. Why are you so furious? Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm so serious. I am. Uh, Sometimes feel that for many, many years I was working on these issues. I worked very closely with ministries. I was uh, among the people who talked with Benny Begin. And I am really very disappointed because when they are talking about we brought the Bedouins to be participants in this plan where they asked us only about the problems and then they took the issues and they were in the Prime Minister office deciding what is the solution. Well, the solution is my own life. So I have to be there to decide what is the solution because at the end of the day, I'm going to live with the solution. Another Prime Minister would live with the solution. So thinking that they are talking with the people in the ground by asking them what the problem but what what's the solution this is not real uh, uh participation this is not real dialogue this is not real negotiation this is one the other thing that dove mentioned that 90 percent of the land in israel is not in the hands of the people but this is was the decision of the state of israel that the land would be in the hands of the jnf and this is not my decision. My land should be in my hands. And if the state wants to have the land in the people's hands, this is the, la this is the state's decision. Okay, so Dove? First of all, I think it's important for Amal and Amir to talk to each other because Amir said a minute ago that he wasn't consulted at all or talked to and Amal just mentioned that she sat with Benny Begin. I agree 100% that the Bedouin community should be much more a part of the solutions. That's a very important statement for all the viewers and all the listeners to hear Duff, that Minister Begin Duff, did actually go and consult with I the said, people. I said, and that's very I said, I said, I said, I didn't interrupt that you. I didn't interrupt you. That we talked about the, right, the issues, we weren't part, part, part of the community. Around the, the the bill itself. No one saw the bill. I no, no, no. I have to I correct Dov. I, I have to correct you, Dov. Do I didn't say Amal. that we were consulted in the bill so itself. No one saw you're the bill. Right. No one saw the plan. The newsroom are listening to this and they're wondering why I'm shouting. Let's just cut everybody's microphone for a moment. The other point I want to make is that the question was framed about a plan of relocation that all people are talking about. Cut everybody's microphone right now. Thank you. All right. This is a really important debate, Amal, Amir, Dov, Haviv. I've never had to do this before and you're upsetting me. I'm trying to get the conversation, I'm trying to understand the conversation and I need you to respect when someone finishes, allow them to retort and if you don't agree, then you can push back, that's fine. You cannot yell and talk all over them because nobody hears however passionate you are. So I'm going to open the microphone again, Amal. You actually made a point, I asked Dove to respond. I'm gonna ask you again to be quiet just for a moment so he can respond. I'm sorry. And then it's you can okay. go back again. I get it, I get how much you care. I mean, I, I want you to go online after you've had this conversation and actually Google Amal Asana. She started off as a, a little girl living in a Bedouin area and she was a little shepherd and she said that's where she learned her community skills. She's a really, really remarkable woman. But right now you're sounding like an angry woman who doesn't allow anyone to talk. So Amal, I'm doing you a favor, I'm asking you. Just take a breath. Dove, let's just pick up here. Sure. First of all, I want to just mention that even hearing a mile's passion, it does pain me as a member of Knesset, and we certainly want to find solutions. The one thing I mentioned was, and I just it's important for everybody hearing the conversation, Amal mentioned there was, a, the Minister Begin from the Israeli government was in discussion. She had a criticism that she wasn't part of the solution, and I hear that, but at least that people should understand the government did approach the Bedouins to hear the problems, to understand it more. It's critical right, so for Dove, people let me, let who me see the Israeli government as evil to see that they took that 
right. Step. Number so, two, Dove, let me, let me two, do the pushback here. But I'm just going to jump in because it's a conversation, Dove, okay? So do allow me to get in here. So I understand that. And that's what Amal was saying. She said, yes, you, you asked us for the consultation process, but then you came up with a solution by yourself. So even, no, that's fine. Yes. I understand so that. But Amir that, mentioned yes. that, that there was no discussion at all with the government. I just thought right. it was important to clarify that. All right, you've clarified that. But the, if you have consultation and then you, <laughs> I don't want to say ignore it, but if you have consultation and then you don't have consultation How on the solution, you? that's a little upsetting. So, can I, can so at, can there was a revelation that I? there wasn't enough uh, Bedouin involvement in this solution, and now we are responding. We are responding right. to that, and we All are right. going to We're explore making that progress and here. Move forward with the program with uh, that consultation. All right, Dove. Oh, is that Haviv I hear piping up there? Okay, yeah, go ahead. I think, I think it's extremely important to note a few critical facts. First of all, the, the, the claim that this plan didn't go through uh, the proper planning processes, the veteran weren't involved is a legitimate claim and that's, and that's something we have to take into account. And the plan may be scrapped because of it. But I think that it's also important to note that there has to be a plan and that the Bedouin know it. And all these conversations and all this discourse about colonialism and post-colonial and orientalism and, and, and ethnic cleansing is, is actually doing a terrible disservice to the Bedouin. If this, if this question of development fundamentally of development, and Amal knows this is the issue, and I don't know about Amir because I haven't heard you say it, but this question of development turns into a nationalistic question that's going to be a terrible disaster. All right, so let me with. say this as an outsider, okay, and I'm just looking at the history of the region. Development for a culture that is a culture that lives in the desert, that lives in tents. So if you take a, cu a culture out of the tents and you put them in houses, that culture doesn't exist anymore. I'm, so I'm, Femi, yeah. Femi, can I ask, uh, if that's true, then you can't on the one hand say we're demanding all the government infrastructure that everyone has in regular residences and then yeah. say we also want to preserve that culture. That's yeah, unfair. but they're asking for infrastructure the in location, not solution. where you've decided to relocate them to. I want to hear, want to hear from to. Amir if the Bedouin live in tents. <laughs> I, I, I'm no Bedouin. I served in the army with Bedouin. All right. I don't remember the Bedouin live in tents. Anymore. All right, you do not need to know that because you are in Israel right now. You can ask your neighbor. Let me in time, I want to ask uh, online community what they're saying. Well, I, I just want to read a couple of the responses we're getting here because there are many. On Facebook, Shul writes in, the power plan is an ethnic cleansing plan. It's a robbery of lands and eth eth epic, excuse me, proportions. On Twitter, David says, Israel's making an effort unique in the Middle East to provide services for the Bedouin community. And one more from Nasreen who says, of course, you can't forget that the land to be grabbed, he says, is privately owned land by the Bedouins. But I want to <laughs> shift this uh, a, a little bit and pick up on something that you mentioned, Femi. Amir, uh, Femi mentioned a way of life, and, and I'd like you to have a listen to this video comment um, from someone who asks about that way of life. American and Israeli politicians are always talking about our shared values, and I think the proverb plan is a perfect example. Yesterday, a Knesset member said that she supported the plan to expel tens of thousands of Israel's Bedouin, quote-unquote, as the Americans did to the Indians. Now, they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but would our progressive U.S. government actually condone ethnic cleansing in 2013? Seeing as it sends billions of our tax dollars to the Israeli military, you might call that tacit approval. So, Amir, she mentioned some strong words there. She says ethnic cleansing, but she also mentions uh, the parallel as she sees it to the American Indians here in the United States and a changed way of life. I, I'd like your thoughts on, on whether or not that's accurate and whether or not this is completely altering a lifestyle. Uh, to some extent, it's accurate. I, ha I have to emphasize the that we are talking about agriculture society. And if you, if you bring all those people and concentrate them in impoverished government uh, plant townships you want to have you want to have a, prosper, a prosperous society i mean we demand basically having agricultural communities and the, and the state is basically denying us denying us those this way of life we would like to have to have our hair to have our hair we would like to go grazing in our community and we can't do it because the government is basically limiting us on a specific on a specific right. uh, land so i mean uh, this is our way of life and the sure. government is asking us to be to be like just put all together in in in, in like kind of refugee camps all right so amir and, uh, i intercepted haviv's question a little bit camps. earlier because i thought he was being a little bit mischievous but this is a good place to ask you his question which was do bedouins live in tents 
the the majority of them live in 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 houses. I mean, people are uh, have to live somehow, and the, some of them do live in, in in tents, and some of them li live in houses. They are not they are not uh, like uh, concrete houses because they are not allowed to build to build such houses. But like uh, like not normal houses, but more like um, uh, improvised houses. All right, so I'm going to wrap up this conversation because I know we could keep going for many hours and we yeah, would I go just, round in wanna, circles. I and I'm, I'm going to ask you. Very short. I'm going to ask you to to wrap up this conversation with me, if I may, because I otherwise we will keep we will keep going, and everybody will say I just need to say this. So I'm going to ask you very specifically something because we can take the conversation offline, which is what we do here at the stream. So Mal, very specifically, I'm going to ask you just for a sentence. What's next for the Prowl plan? Is it dead or not? Uh, I don't think it's dead. I think that the government will take another step to uh, modify it. I am not sure if they would modify it in a way that would serve my people or they modify it the way that they would serve the right wing uh, parties. All right. I thank you for your contribution. So we are and also not done. For we have to continue our struggle. All right. And, and I, I, I thank you for allowing us to keep that conversation going. And I appreciate your passion in it. Amir, is the prior plan, is it dead? We might see it in a different in a different version and and even worse than the version we have right now. Um, we uh, I have to say that we are still uh, continuing our struggle. We are calling people to participate in our next day of action, which will be the 19th of September. So come with us. We are still going marching for our for the recognition of our villages we saw we are not done yet all right times of israel government shells power plan on bedouin settlement that's your newspaper haviv is the uh, is the plan dead is it coming back this i think i'm going to agree with what amir just said this plan was not killed by the activists and it was not killed by the left this plan was killed by the right wing members of knesset who thought that it was far too generous to the bedouins so this is not a good story for the Bedouin. And what I think uh, we need to hope is that the Bedouin and the government can get together and negotiate a much better plan than Prover was, certainly one that fits what the Bedouin need more, uh, but not to celebrate this moment. This is not a good moment to the Bedouin, which is what I meant when I said that they don't understand the politics of this. This is a disaster, this cancellation. All right, so, so Dav, uh, dead or not, shelf, postponed, delayed, what's going on with this prior plan? Is it over? Will we be having another debate about it in a couple of months' time? My perspective from the inside of the Knesset is that we do want to reach out, hear more from the Bedouin community and continue on a plan which provides them with the water, electricity, job training, industrial zones, everything which they need. If they want some kind of a balanced plan, whether they want to continue some kind of a more agricultural, we'll sit, we'll discuss it. And it's very important that my dear friends, Amal and Amir, let's discuss the issues and not create it into some kind of a nationalistic approach. I'm telling you, we can work together. That's the way the Israeli government is. We want to work for human rights and give citizens of the country their rights we will do it right. let's work together and make that happen well you are all my dear friends and thank you for giving my heart to work out today and my lungs dove haviv amir amal i appreciate your perspective here on the prior plan and what's going on with the bedouin community in the negev malika how did the community react to that conversation uh, they were having their own conversations, getting into their own uh, heated discussions, but I think that's the best part right. about the show like this. All right. What will we do next? I know you're wondering. On the next program, for weeks, Ukrainians have been on the streets. They're angry with their president's refusal to sign an EU deal that would have improved trade and brought about key democratic reforms. Now officials say that he intends to sign it after all. But will it end the protesters' anger? We'll find out from Ukrainians on Monday. I'm going to be at stream.aldazira.com with Malika having a lie down. <laughs> We're always online. Take care.